Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and it's time for more updates from the James Webb Space Telescope. It's only been a few months, but so many new discoveries have already been made, and so many incredible pictures have already come out. Such as the picture we discussed last time, the iconic Pillars of Creation, that has now been also released using the mid-infrared observations as well, helping us uncover even more detail that some of the future studies are going to be discussing. But this was discussed in the last video, you can find it in the description. Today we're going to be talking about several other discoveries, some really surprising discoveries, coming from a lot of other observations as well. And let's start with one of the most incredible pictures of the last week. The beautiful image that you see right here. Unusual hourglass shape created by a newly forming star right in the middle. Okay, technically it's hourglass shape if you turn it this way. And what's interesting is that this is only visible in the infrared light. This was completely invisible to us using Hubble telescope or using a lot of other telescopes as well. And what this shows us is a protostar known as L1527, a star located approximately 430 light years away from planet Earth in the region we refer to as the Taurus molecular cloud. And in this case, this is also kind of showing us what our own sun might have looked like four and a half billion years ago because this is literally a formation of a typical star. A very young star that's actually hidden by a huge amount of rotating gas, with some of this gas then being ejected from the star itself and colliding with surrounding matter. Although in this case, the scientists also color these particular parts a little bit differently, depending on the density as well. The blue part shows us relatively low density, whereas the orange parts show us the gas that's more dense. But the disk itself, the protoplanetary disk, that's actually relatively similar size to the solar system, is right there in the middle. And at the moment, this is not actually a star yet. It's not really burning hydrogen yet, which means that it hasn't started its nuclear reaction. But once it does, it's most likely going to expel most of this dust, leaving behind a typical protoplanetary disk. But this was a star that was observed relatively close to us. There was another interesting discovery from much, much farther away. The first ever red giant star discovered at billions of light years away from us. And this is of course something our sun is going to become as well, sometime in the next few billions of years. So basically a star like Betelgeuse or a star like Antares, a star that's hundreds or even thousands of times larger than our sun, but is much cooler with a temperature of approximately three to 4,000 Kelvin. A star visible in this image right here that the scientists nicknamed Cooler, and quite clearly visible right there. And this particular red supergiant is most likely between 7 and 40 solar masses and is probably extremely similar to what Betelgeuse is today. But because these stars generally don't actually last very long, in some sense the scientists got super lucky in being able to see this because as always this is a result of a gravitational lensing effect. In this case, a lensing effect produced by a massive galactic cluster known as El Gordo, with the cluster magnifying the star by approximately 4000 times. And this particular star seems to have existed during the most productive period of star production in the universe. Approximately 3.1 billion years after the formation of the universe, that's when the star formation was at its highest peak, and there were probably quite a lot of these red giants going around. But when it comes to stars, this is still obviously not the farthest object. A few years ago, we've discussed the discovery of the star known as Icarus, which back then was the record holder, but now, the record holder is once again from the James Webb, the star known as Arendelle. This one existed in the universe when it was only about 900 million years old, with the light from the star traveling for nearly 13 billion years. But all of these other stars discovered so far were basically extremely bright blue stars, which is one of the reasons why we're able to see them so well. This, however, is the only red giant discovered so far, and because we know so much about red giants from observing them in the Milky Way, this will definitely allow the scientists to investigate what these early galaxies were like and how the stars might have differed back then compared to how they are today. And then on top of this, James Webb discovered so many new galaxies and provided a lot of information about other galaxies we've already known about. For example, this galaxy right here. This was actually discovered back in 2012, approximately 10 years ago, and back then the Hubble telescope allowed us to see this. This was essentially the candidate for the farthest galaxy ever found. The redshift here was approximately 11. And so the scientists who originally discovered this galaxy wanted to actually try to take a look at it with the James Webb telescope in order to discover more detail and more importantly, potentially find out what's happening in this galaxy because it appeared a little bit different because of the coloration that you see. It seems to be both orange and a little bit of red. 
So something else was going on here, but it wasn't really clear because as you can see, this was the limit of the resolution. And so now exactly the same image is available with the James Webb. And it's able to see something else happening in this region. This dot by itself seems to actually contain two dots inside of it. Moreover, this is a galaxy that's actually gravitationally lensed into three separate images, which means that the scientists get to see it three times from three separate angles. And this shows us that there are indeed two separate objects. One seems to be a little bit more blue and one seems to be a little bit more red, with the blue object essentially being an active galaxy with a lot of young star formation and practically no dust, and the object that's more red being another galaxy that's slightly older and contains a lot more dust. But in a nutshell, these are two separate galaxies that seem to be on a collision course. Essentially, this is the observation of the first ever galactic merger. Or at least it seems so. It's still not entirely clear what's happening here, because even with the James Webb, the images are still are somewhat low in resolution. But all of this will probably be resolved in some of the future studies. Additionally, there was another study that recently confirmed the observations that we've discussed a few months ago of essentially some of the most distant galaxies discovered in just the first few weeks of operation of the James Webb. You can see these two galaxies here, with the redshift of 10.5 and 12.5, with the farthest galaxy confirmed so far being known as Glass Z12. This is when the universe was only about 350 million years old, and these galaxies, surprisingly, are actually very active they also seem to possess a symmetrical, spherical, or disc-like shape, but also just a tiny percentage of the size of the Milky Way. More importantly though, it does appear like they actually formed extremely fast, suggesting that most galaxies in the universe very likely already existed within about 100 million years once the universe began. But then we also had some additional observations in the mid-infrared frequencies, discovering even more galaxies when the universe was only about 1 billion years old the galaxies that were never seen before. And in this case, these galaxies were extremely well visible and visible in the period of the universe that the scientists really want to learn more about. The period that happened right after the so-called Dark Ages when the universe reionized through the formation of various stars and various galaxies. And so essentially they were able to see the galaxies right at the end of that Dark Ages period. Which means that MIRI instrument on the James Webb opens up an entire new way for us to investigate the reionization period of the universe. All of the galaxies here are extremely well visible and will present an opportunity for a lot of investigations in the future. Nothing major was discovered here just yet, this was just a proof of concept, but it's an important step in trying to solve a lot of these mysteries of the early universe. But there has been at least one discovery coming from a nearby galaxy that's actually kind of intriguing and somewhat unusual. The galaxy that you sort of see right here. This is known as WLM or Wolf Lanmark Melot Dwarf Galaxy, located approximately 3 million light years away from us, just a little bit farther away than the Andromeda Galaxy. But what's intriguing about this galaxy is that it's also in a region where there's really nothing else there. In other words, unlike other galaxies that usually have partners or basically orbit one another, WLM Dwarf Galaxy is essentially completely by itself. But more importantly, the recent analysis using James Webb determined something really important about it. It seems that this galaxy has never actually interacted with anything. It's never experienced any collisions, it's never really experienced being next to another galaxy, and it seems to have always been completely by itself. And so the most recent observations from the James Webb telescope were able to see through pretty much all of this, discovering quite a lot of detail about the stars, the gas, and more importantly, the composition of pretty much everything in this galaxy. In the process of discovering that first of all, it seems to be really light in elements heavier than hydrogen and helium, which means that those elements must have disappeared a long time ago, with the current explanation being that a lot of supernova that happened here before very likely just pushed all of the gas away from the galaxy, throwing most of the heavier elements to the outskirts and into the intergalactic space. The scientists usually refer to this as the galactic wind and it has been previously observed in other smaller galaxies. With the stars that are left here, especially low mass stars, responsible for most of the light coming from this galaxy, also being particularly interesting because these are really ancient stars, with some of them potentially existing for billions of years or even almost since the beginning of the universe. And because this galaxy has never interacted with anything, it can actually help the scientists answer quite a lot of questions about the galactic evolution and the evolution of stars by analyzing this somewhat extreme example. 
An example where most of the matter on most of the stars have never actually experienced any kind of interaction with outside forces. Which to some extent is also almost the opposite of the other images James Webb has been taking for several weeks now, such as this one right here. This is an image of two intertwined galaxies 270 million light years away from us that are literally colliding and creating huge amounts of stars approximately 20 times as fast as the Milky Way galaxy. This is an object known as IC1623. And in this case, it's one of those examinations we've discussed before where both the Hubble telescope and the James Webb are trying to take a look at various types of interacting galaxies in order to learn more about star formation and in order to understand exactly how galactic evolution works or how galaxies ended up like they are today. And so in this case, the combination of the studies of these interacting galaxies with whatever else we can find here will actually help the scientists possibly answer these questions in the next few years. For now though, it's just a really really beautiful image. But not the only image of an active galaxy with a lot of star formation and a lot of energy. There was also an examination of a Cepher galaxy, a galaxy with an active center known as NGC 7469. And in this case, the scientists investigated the interaction between the galactic nucleus, which is active and essentially contains an extremely active black hole in the middle, and also various star-forming regions located in the galaxy itself. And because this galaxy is also sort of facing us, it becomes possible to analyze this with a lot of precision. And because the scientists were able to peer through most of the gas in this galaxy using infrared frequencies, they were now able to see huge amounts of winds coming from the supermassive black hole, heating up a lot of gas surrounding the region around the black hole through the process known as shock heating. As this black hole in the galactic center pushes on all of the gas surrounding it and creates a kind of a shock that spreads throughout the galaxy. And though usually this ends up stopping star formation, it can actually also create a lot of compressed regions of gas that end up encouraging star formation in certain regions, which is probably what's happening in this galaxy as well. It does contain several star forming regions where large parts of this galaxy have now become essentially starburst regions, the regions with a lot of stars being born right now. And all of this a result of the activity from the central black hole that's dumping huge amounts of energy into the interstellar medium. Although a lot of this could also be a product of a collision with the second galaxy you see right there. In other words, the activity from the black hole could have been influenced by the interaction with the partner galaxy. And so quite a lot of interesting discoveries in just the last few weeks. But that's obviously just the beginning. There will be so many more discoveries coming in the next few weeks and I'm definitely going to be covering them as well. On that note, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, check out previous videos that do cover other discoveries from the James Webb in the description below, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt that also features James Webb in one of the designs. Either way, stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.